Hello YouTube and welcome back to UK Highland Photography. I'm Strober and today we're going to be talking about a recent event that I attended as a photo journalist. Now, I have to admit, I love photo journalism. I've been doing it for a few years now. And the reason why I like it is because it's a bit like street photography. However, it has, in my honest opinion, a more in-depth story about it. And there was one event recently where a prisoner had scaled onto the roof of Her Majesty's Prison, Manchester. And that's also known as Strange Ways. Now, let me give you a little bit of history about Her Majesty's Prison, Manchester. Back in 1990, the prison service seen their biggest riot in history, and it happened at Strange Ways, HMP, Manchester. And basically, now in 2015, we see the prisoner, Stuart Horner, have a protest on top of the same prison. Now, who is Stuart Horner? Stuart Horner is a convicted murderer. He was given 27 years for the shooting of his uncle, which he killed, murdered, with a sawn-off shotgun. He's currently at Her Majesty's Prison, Manchester, and he is also an E-list convict. So that basically means that he has attempted to escape in the past, and because he's attempted to escape or abscond, as it's known within the prison world, then he has to wear one of these silly looking suits. As you can see, it's not it's it's, it's kind of like a clown outfit, isn't it? You know, but apparently that is what he has to wear whenever he leaves his cell and moves about the prison or if they take him outside the prison such as court. I'm sure he's going to be back in court because of this and he'll probably have to wear that suit again. Anyway, so I attended his, I attended on the third day of him protesting on the roof of Strange Ways. Now, when I arrived at the prison, the first thing I noticed was that there was a lot of people there that was actually showing a lot of support for Stuart on a public announcement uh, equipment. And it must have been his family, it must have been his friends, and, you know, it, I was shocked, really, to be honest with you, because he seemed to have a lot of uh, support there. And... Apparently, when I spoke to the police, the, his supporters would not communicate with them. So, it was kind of strange because they were communicating with me, but they wouldn't communicate with the police, and the police was communicating with me, but the police really wouldn't communicate with them. So, I kind of felt like piggy in the middle. And then, from their public announcement equipment, they started to play a tune called I Got The Power, which was a tune back in 1990, which was by the artist Snap. So, they started playing this tune called I Got The Power by Snap, and the thing was, during the riot of 1990, on the very same roof, the prisoners up there at that time was dancing to this exact same tune, which is... There you can, you, you can see, you see the comparison of playing that tune. Now, I actually started to feel that I was at an outside nightclub. Because the music was playing and everybody seemed to be cheering and partying, it actually tricked me into thinking that there was not a convicted murderer up on that roof. 
I actually thought I was attending an outdoor event where like probably like Glastonbury or something like that. It was just so surreal. Now, when I started to work as a photographer, I wanted to have uh, a name. I wanted to have a goal of photographing Stuart. And that goal was that I wanted to capture Stuart, the prisoner. I wanted to capture the prisoner and the prison at the same time. Because Strange Ways, HMP Manchester, it's a Victorian prison. It stayed like into Victorian ways until 1990. It was only in 1990 that they modernised this prison. So it has got a lot of history about it. So I wanted my photographs to capture not only the prisoner, but also the prison itself. And on this day, I was very lucky because where the prisoner was on the roof, then the sun was right in front of him, setting on the, on the horizon. As a matter of fact, the prisoner was being blinded by the sun at certain stages. But this setting sun just totally helped my photography and I was really, really grateful for that. And moving on, I was working on manual focus. Now, I've got a Sigma 175 to 500 millimeter lens and the problem is, the autofocus system just is not compatible with my DSLR. Therefore, I'm forced to operate the Sigma lens in manual mode. However, I don't think I've done a very bad job because some of the photographs actually came out quite cool. Another problem I faced on this uh, assignment was that my battery grip was playing up on me. For some unknown reason, my battery grip at the worst times likes to help trick my DSLR into thinking that the batteries and the battery grip ain't compatible with the camera. And it's so frustrating because you go to take a photograph you press the button, nothing happens, and when you look on the LCD screen, it says these batteries are not compatible. And it's very frustrating because I've got to disconnect the battery grip, put it back in, secure it, and then try continuing to capture that moment. And yeah, you know, very, very painful, very painful. Now, the next problem I faced as the photographer was the people distracting me. Now, I understand I've turned up, you know, at this area, I've got a big massive lens, people are wondering who I am, I understand that. But this time it was different because every time I took a photograph, instead of me being the first person to look at that photograph, I would take the photograph and as soon as it uh, illuminated up on the LCD screen, Somebody else had their head in front of me and they were looking at the photograph first. I bet you've never heard that happen to you before, guys. People actually looking at your photographs before you yourself can actually see what the photographs look like. It was a turn up for the books for me. Not only was people distracting me that way, but people were asking me to take photographs of the children and they wouldn't leave me alone until I took photographs of the children. Photograph coming up now. And then I had people wanting me to take photographs of themselves. And then people wanting to know where I'm from, what company I work for, stuff like this. And by all this time, you know, Stuart's standing up, he's moving about, and I just can't get these shots because I'm, I've got too many distractions going on in addition to the camera failing to work with me with regards to the battery grips. Now, a question I kept getting asked this day was, are you a journalist? People kept on asking me that. The police were asking me that. 
Stuart supporters was asking me that, members of the public was asking me that. My answer to them is no, I am not the official press, but yes, I am there for media coverage, but I'm independent and I don't work for any organisation or mainstream newspaper, stuff like that. And it was quite ironic because when I was honest and I told people that I was not mainstream media, they appeared to be kind of like got it. They, they, they seem to be kind of like, oh, I really wished you were. And I, I got this impression from both the police and from the prisoners, shirts, supporters. But anyway, another interesting thing why I thought to myself was I remember zooming into a full 500 millimetres and I could see Stuart right in the viewfinder and then I remember manually focused and I got him, you know, sharp as I can see him in my lens and then I remember pressing, you know, the shut release button and the little, you know the little red dot? The little red dot just appeared in front of uh, Stuart and I, something in my head said to, said to myself, you know, Wow, could you imagine what a sniper would look like? If, 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 like if it was in America, for example, if, if you were in America, Stuart would have had a sniper on him. That would have been a fact, okay? But here in the United Kingdom, Stuart didn't. But just seeing the way I seen Stuart through that lens just made me paint that photograph in my head of a sniper locking a shirt through a scope, which, you know, pretty powerful image. Now, moving on, so what was the overall story of Stuart? What was, why, why was Stuart on top of Her Majesty's prison in Manchester in the first place? We are not quite sure why he was up there. What we do know is that he did say something about getting more staff, for the prison service to get more staff. Now, from what we can understand, is that, again, you've got to remember, Stuart is serving life for murder, so Stuart's never ever going to leave prison for a very long time. He'll be in his 60s before he gets out. With this stunt, he might even get out now until he's 70, or 70 plus. But anyway, the prison service has seen a lot of cuts recently, just like everywhere in the United Kingdom. And that means less prison staff, less money to spend on prisoners, etc. And apparently prisoners are spending a lot longer in their prison cells than what they used to. And the reason being is because there's not enough prison officers to look after the prisoners. And of course, you can imagine, keep a man in the room for long periods of time, you know. We can understand the feelings you could possibly be going through. However, you know, it's 2015, the United Kingdom, there's been many cuts throughout the country, not only in the prison service, but in education, you know, social sectors, all that. So everybody's feeling the cuts. And, you know, this has been one of these assignments that has just made me, you know, analyse my own life because Stuart's 35 years old. I'm 35 years old. And Stuart's destiny is a lot different from my destiny. And when I think about what my destiny is, I can honestly say I feel grateful because I know my destiny is a lot brighter than what Stuart's destiny is. And yeah, it, very, very, very 
Very interesting assignment, guys. I mean, I have, it's like I've said on social media, I have my own thoughts about the prison system and how it's run and stuff like that. But I feel, as a photojournalist, that when you attend these events and you're there in person, to me anyway, it makes me more open-minded because when, when I watch mainstream media, I tend to form one-sided opinions, but when I actually go there in person, my mind becomes more opened because I see more facts around me. And yeah, it, it, it just makes me more open, to be honest with you guys. But yeah, so basically, you've seen some photographs of Stuart and let's talk about some of my favourite photographs. Now, when I first arrived, I seen Stuart sitting peacefully, you know, on the strange ways roof and then moving on, the prisoners started holding out, you know, these makeshift message boards and one of them had it had wrote on it on one side, are you proud? And when he flipped it around, it said, Chris Railing. Now, we don't know who this Chris is. We don't know if Chris is a prison officer. We don't know if he's a policeman. We don't know if he's the governor. We don't know if he is another prisoner himself. We don't know who this Chris guy is. But anyway, that's what the prisoners were doing. They were holding out this homemade message board that read, you know, are you proud Chris Raylan? And the next thing I remember seeing with regards to Stuart was he was carrying out first aid on himself. He, he was actually making himself a makeshift bandit whilst he was up on the roof. And then he starts waving at his support is once he's finished making his makeshift bandage. The next thing I started to notice was the prisoner was starting to get cold up on that roof and he started wrapping a jacket around him and wearing it a bit like a hoodie. And all of a sudden, he seemed to get these mittens, like these gloves from somewhere. So. To me, it was pretty obvious that even though this was his third day of protest on the roof, the prisoner had quite a few resources up there to get him by his protest with. Now, the next thing I seen was quite surreal. Members of the public started to set off fireworks. You believe that, guys? So you've got the prison itself here, then you've got the police, and then you've got members of the public outside supporting the prisoner, and they set off fireworks. And all of a sudden, when the fireworks explode, the prisoner waves his hands up, as to say, I see that, thank you. And it's quite ironic, because as you can see in the photograph, it's nothing special about that photograph, because I didn't focus on him correctly, because I was in manual focus mode, but nonetheless, it still tells the story of Stuart celebrating what is deemed to be his victory over the prison service. Now, the next thing I noticed was the sun had gone down, and when the sun had gone down, Stuart decided to have a little sleep on top of the roof. So, because I left my tripod at home, I'm resting on these traffic cones and I'm trying to get a still amount of shots as possible of him having a little power nap, having a little sleep up there on the roof. And I actually got this shot and I actually think that's not a bad shot for a photographer who's shooting on 500 millimeters, you know, as something like an eighth of a second in order to capture this prisoner having a sleep on top of a prison roof. Now, 
To finish with, the last thing I've seen of Stuart was this photograph. I know, guys, I know there's nothing special about this photograph, but again, I had no tripod, and this time I shot it handheld. But the fact is, this photograph does show the prisoner walking off into the shadows with a makeshift rope. Once he disappeared into the shadows, I never seen him again all night. And yeah, very, very, very fanciful and very educational assignment was this photo journalism event. So guys, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for listening to me talk about my current photo project. And remember to su subscribe to the channel. I've been Strober. When you get the time, head over to the shop at www.ukhighland.co.uk and there you can find a wide range of photographic accessories for your DSLR needs. Again, guys, thank you for listening and I'll see you all soon.